Before I continue presenting more Python syntactic features related with control flow, I'd like to say a word or two about code indentation. First, I'd like you to be aware that Python programs may include lines of code with multiple levels of indentation. Code indented to three or more levels naturally occurs when you have several nested control flow structures, such as an if statement inside of another if statement. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. The following code does something very similar to what we've seen in previous lessons, but using nested if statements instead. The code first checks whether a variable x is zero, and if so, it prints x is zero. Otherwise, it begins the execution of the else block. But under this else block, we have another if statement, which checks whether x is greater than zero or not, and prints the corresponding message in each case. So far, I've been asking you to use a tab character to precede every line within the body of an if, elif, or else block. And as a matter of fact, we've been conveniently relying on the tab character that our code editor has automatically inserted for us. Well, as it turns out, Python allows each indentation level to be expressed either as a tab character or as a sequence of one or more spaces, entered using the space key of your keyboard. If you use spaces over tabs, you can decide how many spaces you use as a prefix for indented lines. You can even change the number of spaces used in each level of indentation, as long as you stay consistent throughout your code. Although I really don't recommend this practice, as it may lead to unnecessary confusion. Let me show you what I mean. Technically, you could express the previous code as follows. Here, we're using two spaces for the first level of indentation and four spaces for the second level. After you use a specific sequence of spaces for the first time, Python adopts that standard for the remaining code. So when it sees the if statement in line four prepended by two spaces, it knows that the else in line six, which is also prepended by two spaces, is matched with that if. If at this point Python detected a different number of spaces not encountered in a previous line of code, for example, just one space, a syntax error would occur. I encourage you to try this on the code editor and see it with your own eyes. There is a never-ending debate in the Python community about whether one should use tabs versus spaces for indentation. And there are good reasons to argue for one approach or the other. In favor of tabs, we could argue that only one keystroke, the tab or backspace key, is needed to add or remove one level of indentation, whereas the use of spaces would require multiple keystrokes for the same purpose. Additionally, going back one level of indentation is guaranteed to make you land at a valid position when you're using tabs, while spaces may make you end up with an invalid number of them, as we saw in the previous example. In favor of spaces, though, we could argue a consistent layout across editors, while type characters may be rendered with different widths by different tools. And on a similar note, spaces let you determine the exact width you want to use for each indentation level, whereas tabs restrict this width to your editor's configuration. In spite of both approaches being valid and widely used, it's important that we choose one option and stick to it throughout this course. And this option will be tabs. This preference is actually embedded in the behavior of our code editor, as I already pointed out in previous lessons. Our editor inserts a new level of indentation in the form of a tab character automatically when you press the Enter key if the current line ends with a colon. Likewise, pressing enter when the current line does not end with a colon character will cause the code editor to insert as many tab characters as are present in the previous line, effectively keeping you at the same level of indentation. You'd have to explicitly remove prefixed tab characters by pressing the backspace key, should you want to go back to a previous level. This is a useful and intuitive feature of our environment, commonly adopted by most Python code editors. If you enjoyed this content, you may watch the rest of this lesson at computersciencecam.com, linked in the description below. You'll be able to follow along with coding samples and problems in our embedded code editor. 
Drop your questions in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel. Thank you and happy coding!